All right, so I just have a, I just have a few like scattered thoughts, um, a few like scattered thoughts, two two thoughts which which I'm gonna try and like squash together into one coherent narrative through tenuous segues. So firstly, I want to talk about um, uh, uh, well, I don't know what order they're gonna come out in, so who knows? But I want to talk about. Um, uh, 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 fucking let's use words here let's use words here i want to talk about like uh extremities uh, on the internet in terms of uh tastes specifically to do with music um uh black and white thinking in a sense right i want to talk about black and white thinking and i want to talk about um i also want to talk about how the way i think about music um like the way I feel music, I, I intuit music, the way I pass music is, is quite different, I think, from the way a lot of other music makers think about it. And I, I guess I'll start with that. So uh, essentially, I, 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 I was going to say, say something along the lines of most people who make music think about music in terms of tones and rhythm, right? Uh, and, you know, you could, it, <clears throat> you could, this is going to be uh, just technical rants about music terminology, so uh, if that it doesn't interest you, uh, you, you probably, it, you, I don't know what you're doing here really, but um, uh, so, so most people think about uh, tone a lot when, when making music, and, and tone doesn't just mean, uh, when I say uh, like pure tone, you think of like a sine wave, right? Uh, or something along those lines, right? Like the basic oscillator type of shit, right? But also, timbre in general is actually just stacked tones. Everyone knows this way. Right? It's just it's stacked like harmonic series tones, various blah blah blah, right? And I so so I'm I'm including that in tone. Uh, I know that's kind of a tenuous, like, like way to like we don't necessarily hear them as separate tones, but I'm just gonna do it because it simplifies everything. So tone and rhythm, right? So you you essentially break break music down into uh, the notes, like the the actual waves, like the waves that are being played, and the rhythm that you can feel, like the the so which note is being played and when it's being played, essentially. Um, that's how most people think about music. So uh, if some people think about it in all sorts of different ways, like the, you can you can break those two things down in in, in just incredible variety of ways. You could. Uh, I, I, I follow someone on Twitter who's really into thinking about um, tone as as literal tone, like unrelated, kind of separated, uh, distanced from its, uh, like, uh, I guess classical music understanding of, like, harmony and, like, really interested in ratios and things like that, like, uh, creating all sorts of sonic illusions with ratios, all sorts of microtonal music and... Uh, like uh, free harmony and stuff like that. Like they, you could think about it like that. Like literally thinking in in sense of or like dividing an uh, dividing a semitone into a hundred, right? And uh, what it even means to have a semitone, like because they mean different things in different contexts. Uh, so that's that's one way of thinking about music, like tone. And and obviously that's a very specific way of thinking about tone. But most people think about tone in terms of melody and harmony, right? And obviously. So, so you know, you got your jazz musicians and your classical musicians who who mostly think about um, harmony, right? Well, like like the the whenever you hear someone like Jacob Collier talking or you watch an Adam Neely video, you know they talk a, a lot about harmony. Uh, this is what was really interesting to them. So, uh, especially things like you know functional harmony type shit, like uh, you know take something basic like I'll, I'll use that comparison later. But you know, like how how different chords. Rep, like uh like it's it's almost like a, a sort of a, analyzing music as a language like uh like uh going on a journey with music or something like that but using different forms of harmony and uh, like what different harmonies um like what what information a, a, a different note or a different harmony can can tell you right and then of course there's also the other side of, of where it's rhythm which is less important in classical music but with jazz course that's a, a big deal keep like the rhythm is is the rhythms in in a lot of jazz are incredibly complex you got stuff like polyrhythms and and all that shit right and, and uh like 
that's how most people think about music. And then on the other side of things, you've got uh, a lot of electronic musicians, particularly EDM type musicians, or, or in fact, just a lot of electronic musicians are very interested in, in timbre, exploring timbre, um, and different ways things can sound, ways of making synths and stuff, right? Uh, which I, you know, that's also included in tone, right? So that's how most people like, like think about music when they're making it is like, what, what, like what emotion is this thing conveying or like do i feel the groove am i locked in to this this mel this uh this rhythm right that sort of thing whereas i don't feel it in that sense i feel music as a collection of symbols and um signifiers right so so when i hear this is the example i skipped over earlier if i hear a four five one chord progression which is incredibly common right uh, like the most classic chord progression pretty much in modern music uh, right if from from most people's perspectives they would hear it as as functional harmony like the the tonic and dominant tension and release type of situation whereas i hear it as a four five one like that is like like and all the the cultural signifiers all the music i've heard before that's what i think about when i hear that i don't hear the actual notes i hear <clears throat> I hear what that represents in terms of, uh, on a sort of meta level, I guess, uh, on a sort of uh, representational level, r r r bouncing off of uh, my past experiences listening to music and other cultural signifiers. Uh, so I think this is exa exemplified in like, uh let's let's say something like i guess i could just talk about my own songs so how i use it in my own song so when i when i make a like when i make a song like i don't know uh and, um uh, i just want to lose everything second track on to the fairest that song or actually uh, let's take a better example because i've talked about that one before let's let's talk about um neat days right so neat days you you could analyze it in the sense of like the actual emotions of the piece like you could analyze what the the face value of that song is is saying right like you could analyze the if i if i can even remember how to fucking play this song it's been a long time uh like the the literal melody section like the something like this fuck that's not it, you know. But something like that, or or, or take it, uh, instrumentality, right? Like you could actually analyze, you could you could you could view that in in isolation. The melody, um, Neat Days is a better example, though. So I'm going to talk about that. You could view the melody to Neat Days in isolation as a melody and what it actually communicates. But that's not how I ever thought about it. The melody represents all j poppy kind of cheesy, melodramatic music in that sense. Specifically, it was supposed to sound like an anime OP. Like, like it's supposed to be very positive, a very positive, a very, like, but then it's amped up to the point of, of being like, it's, it's actually, I, it's somewhat ironic, right? Because the whole message of the song is about neat days. It's about distracting yourself by watching anime, right? Uh, or, you know, other forms of escapism. Um, that's the entire point of the song. That's why, like, when the, the noise comes in after that, right? Which, I, in retrospect, now being a little more brave with my use of noise, I would have made that noise a lot louder. Uh, or, or, or just more apparent in the mix because I feel like it kind of gets buried underneath the other instruments, which is still fine, but not... I'm just... Anyway, um, when that comes in, it's not... That noise cannot be analysed in terms of the notes it is. It doesn't make any sense. Or when... And then there's a blast beat comes in. You can't think of that as the melody changes into a tuk -tuk 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 -tuk, like, oh the, the rhythm changes in like the drum pattern changes that's not what it's that you would be you would be missing the entire point if you did that you would you would be analyzing it and missing the entire like you, you're you're just on the wrong level 
you're not doing it in the way I think about it. I'm not thinking about it as, the, you know, the drums playing that pattern. I'm thinking about it as, and then it turns into black metal for a bar, right? And, like, all of what that means. Like, the... the, the it's literally supposed to sound like there is a a under like underneath everything is like something really bad, but then like there's this like happy like manically happy layer layered on top, but like sometimes the the badness just breaks through, but then it's quickly buried again. That's what it means. That's how I think about it, and and like even though the actual harmonies of of the the like uh, the singing even like. Like that's not super sad or mel like melancholic. It's a little like I can imagine that played on a violin would sound kind of sad, but it's it's not like super fucking depressing, right? But within the the meta context of the song, it represents something bigger than what it actually is it doesn't just represent the the actual notes that's playing right it rep th those notes don't really matter what matters is what the notes signify in terms of the listener like you hear that and then you you think about it or i think about it in terms of other songs that use similar melodies and what they're trying to convey and how it's sort of twisting that and the way this is i think I, I mean, I'm very influenced by Shinsei Kamata-chan on this, right? It's, th this is the way I read Shinsei Kamata-chan, is that it's exactly what I'm doing. It's taking pop music and uh, just, like, commenting on it, basically. I won't... Maybe one day I'll fuck allies all of Tumane, but that is not going to happen today. So I, I just think... I, I don't think that's particularly common in musicians. It might be... It's, it's probably more common in music listeners and music crit critics, right? But it seems like... They it's not a very common thing for actual musicians to, to think about, especially people who are into composition and, and music theory and stuff. They often think about the 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 they they ignore the the meta text and like they they focus completely on what the sound directly like is rather than what it represents in terms of its context. Uh, and now for the awkward segue into how am I going to turn this into talking about um, Tame Impala. So Tame Impala, right, there's a lot of memes about Tame Impala, right, there's a lot of memes about Tame Impala saying like, uh, oh yeah, I love obscure music, I love Tame Impala, and then the Doom of Face, Rage Face guy goes like, no, no, you don't like obscure music, Tame Impala is a popular music, right, and this is kind of a, a, a an underhanded way of saying like if you like Tame Impala you're not a real music fan and this video is not a Tame Impala defense force video like I don't particularly care about Tame Impala's music but I care about the attitude that that sort of represents so um oh no I've just got an error message I, I hope it hasn't I don't think it stopped recording but uh there might be some stutters in the video so hopefully it's fine anyway um so, so Tame and Parla are like a pretty average band. They do some things well, they do some things not very well. All in all, like, the, what the memes are implying is that if you like Tame and Parla, you probably haven't heard that much psych rock. And that is true. But anyone who really, really, really has, like, like what, it's, I guess it's a gatekeeping thing, right? But that doesn't really make any sense with the genre like that. It makes sense with, like, gatekeeping makes sense with something like black metal doesn't really make sense with something like psych rock because like if, if as you get more and more down the psych rock rabbit hole you either just start listening to only stuff from the 60s which is just boring like if you become that then then you're just like i mean sure that's your taste but like you're you're like you're regressing you, you can never see those bands alive as they were in their best time you know you're just into old music at that point you're not in like are you into psych rock? Are you into 60s psych rock? That's a different thing, right? So Tame Impala represent this this sort of force of, of like popular rock music. And the like the classic comparison is like, well, you know, Tame Impala, but then King Gizzard. 
and and it's like and then there was even a counter meme to that so saying like King Gizzard aren't even that obscure themselves like King Gizzard have like million views on a lot of their their videos they sell out festivals and shit which is a fair fucking point um and then you'd get into a weird obscurity argument and you don't end until you it doesn't make any sense because if you really get down into the psycho rabbit hole right at some point you it there's no distinction between what's psychedelic and what's just avant-garde and here's the question I pose to you, audience. Is Captain Beefheart a psych rock album? Is that album psych rock? That's just, like, that question doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, you, feel free to answer in the comments. I, I would be interested to hear your opinions. But to me, that question just shows you have a misguided understanding of genre, right? Saying, saying certain things are or aren't psych rock is, is useful... It's not useful. It's useful for, like, a broad definition. But psych rock as a genre is, is just kind of shit, right? At, like, at, as a descriptor. Because, like, rock is such a broad thing. Like, you know, obviously. Uh, and then psychedelic is also such a broad thing. Like, okay, for example, um, I believe Masona, Ma Masona has a album called LSD, right? Is that a psych rock album? Is that a psychedelic album? It's just like it's harsh wall noise. It like it falls apart. It goes back to genres and signifiers, right? So, th like, if you hadn't been signified that this album was supposed to be psychedelic by the title being LSD, would you just hear it as another? Like, would you necessarily hear it as as anything psychedelic inspired, or would you hear the same harsh noise sounds that you might associate with a flowing? like a uh, waterfall of noise type of Merzbell recording or would you hear it more as like a, a punk sort of anarchistic uh, er Erisian kind of uh, Hannah Tarash type of thing you know like if you didn't have the signifier how would you hear it like how much of my opinion on a band like that like Hannah Tarash for example is influenced by their own the way they perceive themselves and how much is pure music it's impossible to, like, you can't separate yourself from that. And you can't separate the idea, like, you can't listen to uh, noise music without thinking about it as noise music. There we go. I managed to actually connect these two points. I'm impressed with myself. So so I can't I can't listen to, to noise. No one can listen to noise music without someone in the back of your head knowing that this is abnormal music, right? And therefore, you can't judge it in the same way you would judge something that is normal music, right? And this is also a problem when you're getting into music from other cultures. Um, like, the music you grow up with is generally, I'm assuming for most of my viewers, Western tuning scale, most almost entirely in 4-4, um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and then when you get into the, the more wild and wacky stuff, right, this, the, or stuff from other cultures, like gamelan music for example which i've been i've been getting trying to get into i, I would not say i'm into it yet like i i'm very into it like i'm very interested in it but i'm not that knowledgeable on it um it's very like the way like for example in gamelan music it's it's pretty much not in 4-4 but they net they don't count it they don't count beats so you can't really assign a time signature to it in the same way you would with western music or with certain balkan dance musics they don't have a time signature in the same way. They have a, a long beat and a short beat, right? Like, they're still beats, uh, but it doesn't make sense to divide it into, like, loads and loads of sections because it's just, like, to do with a dance. You know, you got all sorts of things like that that don't make sense to a Western ear, and you can't listen to it objectively because you already come from... You already you don't come from that culture. Um, I think it's, it's almost like trying to learn a language. You need to be immersed. You need to only listen to it. So, for example, when I was trying to really intuit uh, polyrhythms, I spent a couple of days listening to only African drum, so drum circle music, right? Uh, to try and really get those polyrhythms into my head. I don't know how well that fucking worked. I feel like that might have just been a failed experiment. Um, but I've done that with multiple things. I did that with that, and then later on, I was like, I want, I, again, I want to really get rhythm. Uh, so I tried to, I tried to listen to only music that... Um, had no had only drums and voice or or uh percussion and voice no no melod no melody uh, i got really into a band called wild birds and peace drums really good band i, I recommend them uh 
so you got all sorts of shit like that, you know, but you can't separate it from the fact that you know you're not listening to normal music. You you have all this so this context around it. So like when you when you listen to um music like that that takes inspiration from African and post African rhythms, right? You think about like it sounds African or it sounds Afro Cuban or something like that. And then you have the whole like ideas in your head about what that signifies culturally like oh well this means it must demo it sort of represents this feeling of of exoticism exoticism is that a word being exotic and um it, it gives you a feeling of of like foreignness and and a sort of like a a happy like a, a sort of um the innocent like cultural dance thing right which we don't have in western music because we always think of western music as take itself very seriously and you know you've got Bach and he's all talks about serious and then you've got like your, your Africans over there with their drumming circles and look at them they don't take it seriously or something like that maybe I'm but like obviously it's not those exact thoughts but that's something that we have, like as a as a culture is like that's somewhere inside of you that you can't get rid of you can be aware of it but it's very hard to go to go beyond it to like ignore it, um, and maybe you won't even want to do that. It's it's hard to say. Um, but back to black and white thinking and Tame Impala. So the truth about Tame Impala is they're just all right. Uh, the things Tame Impala does really well, in my opinion, is the guy really knows how to mix guitar, specifically fuzz guitar. He makes fuzz guitar. He really understands fuzz guitar, and it sounds fucking sick every time he does it. And he is very inspired by Motown bass mixing, so his bass always sounds sick. Uh, but well, he's inspired by Motown bass mixing because the artists that he's inspired by, the Beatles, ripped off Motown uh, and like black artists. Uh, we all know this. Uh, so, so that's what Tame Impala does well, and their songs are, you know, they're catchy. They're 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 well written as like a pop song. They're they're not particularly like mind bending or whatever. But what I'm saying is, the fact that they're super popular makes people want to have polarizing opinions on them. Like you, you can't be like, yeah, you know what that song, Elephant, that's a pretty nice groove to it. Because then you're like, oh, you're a Tame Impala fan. You're not a real music fan. It's like, it's like you. What does that mean? What does that mean? I, 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 and this is a strange thing for, for me to say because, like, I'm generally pro gatekeeping. Uh, like, I. But the difference is, okay, I think I think the difference here is is between gatekeeping art and gatekeeping a community. So, the saying like, uh, "Oh, you like X band," that means you're not a real music fan, right? Doesn't really make sense because music fans. Is, is just like everyone in the world, pretty much. Like, most people listen to music at one point or another and enjoy it at one point or another. Even if it's just, like, people, someone dancing in the club, they probably enjoy the music at that point or something along those lines, right? Um, so, like, that's a, that's stupid. But whereas if someone says, um, like, like uh, oh, you're not a real anime fan, you like X show... That makes a little more sense, because anime is a very insular medium, less so nowadays, but it was for a long time, whereas music has never been an insular medium. Music has always been, had a big audience. Um, I mean, of course, this is not always true when you get into specific genres. For example, classical music has not has a is a niche genre that has like its own little fandom, and if, if you go in saying, I love classical music, hell yeah, yeah, Mozart's great, you know, and then you only know, like, Mozart, Beethoven type of shit, then you're probably going to get shit on by classical musicians who really know their shit, and they're going to, they, they're not going to take you seriously when you have opinions. But, the problem with that is, if I can name off 20 obscure Baroque composers, and then turn around and say Vivaldi is my favourite composer, then, like, they'll be like, ah, yes, Vivaldi, he is of course one of the greats, you know? It's all about whether you actually have the depth of knowledge to back it up or not. Um, but 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 black and white thinking like this, like saying something has to be either the, one of the greats or just like, oh, if you think this is good, then you clearly don't know anything about the genre or something like that. It's just, just harmful. But more than that, it's just incorrect. <laughs> it's, it's damaging because it stops you from taking lessons from things. 
uh, it stops you from thinking nuanced. So you couldn't, if you just had the opinion that Tim and Paul is just something that normies listen to, then you would never do critical listening, which is an incredibly important skill if you want to be into art in any way. Uh, so you could never listen to a Tame Impala song and instead of just listening to it and letting it sort of go over your brain, you could never listen to it and think about the music because you'd be too busy thinking about the signifier that listening to Tame Impala means you're not a very good music person or whatever the fuck people think about things these days. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make... It doesn't help anyone to have those opinions. And sometimes you don't want to help people. <laughs> sometimes you don't want to help people. Um... Uh, but I'm trying to, like, draw this distinction in my mind between, like, groups that are, that are insular and, like, the choir... Well, you know, I have this opinion, right, and I don't know if I've really shared it on here, that, that if you're one of those people that really strongly believes in gatekeeping a community, uh, especially a hobby, then you, you have a problem, and the problem is that your hobby is not autistic enough. Uh, so something like I always use the example uh, there is no gatekeeping the model train community there is no gatekeeping the Thomas the Tank Engine fandom there's no no one's gatekeeping uh, I don't know being really into different chewing gum flavors and collecting chewing gum flavors I'm sure there's a bunch of people that do it and I am sure that they are completely helpful if you want to get into that community but when you get into something less autistic than that, like anime in general, right, which is what this argument is normally used for, or, or like something like the Steven Universe fandom, something that pretty much anyone could get into if they had like the, the mildest interest in the medium, especially anime, right? Because anime is such a broad thing. You could be an anime fan and only watch Dragon Ball Z. You could be an anime fan and only watch art films from the 80s, you know, and they're still both anime. Um... And that's why it's a problem, because when people say say we have to gatekeep the, the fandom from these X people it doesn't make much sense because there is no homogenous anime fandom. Maybe there was 40 years ago, but there isn't any more. You know, the, the, the stuff I like is completely different from the stuff other people like. I don't have to gatekeep the obscure magical girl show from the early 2000s fandom because it's only two of us. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm quite happy to recommend everyone go watch like Fushigi Maho Fun from Pharmacy or something like that. I, I would recommend it, like that sort of thing. But I'm, I'm not running around saying like, oh no, you fucking normies don't understand the deep implications of um, Bottle Fairy. If, you, if you're autistic enough to watch Bottle Fairy, then you understand the deep implications of the show. And that's 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 my opinion on gatekeeping. So so when when something has broad appeal, uh, there's no point in gatekeeping it because you're never going to win. Uh, and if you want a small industry community, you are the one that needs to move. You need to move somewhere where it, there's more autism. And you can be in both. You can easily be in both. There's no rule saying you can't be in both. I like Evangelion. Evangelion is one of the most popular anime ever made. I also like, I don't know. Uh, I'm also really into Aria the Animation right now, which is not like super super obscure, but it's like like already the the difference between the amount of people who would probably have Ava in their favorites and the amount of people who would probably have Aria in their favorites is is like a huge difference because Iashike is a niche subgenre of a niche subgenre, right? And the only people who are into it are the people who are into it, rather than the people who are into it are just the people who generally like vague X thing. And and if if I was to go around saying Ava's bad uh, because if you like Ava, you clearly haven't seen much anime, that wouldn't make any fucking sense. I mean, I know I'm comparing Ava to Tim and Parla here indirectly, which is stupid because one is actually good. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, let's, let's take something else, like uh, Hunter x Hunter. Hunter x Hunter is like, it's a pretty good show. I liked it. It's probably my favorite shonen show, even though I'm not super into shonen. Uh, but I like many people who are really into anime like Hunter Hunter a lot. Uh, like people who have seen much more shows than me. I'm pretty sure Jalen Harris likes Hunter Hunter a lot, and he's seen many more shows than me. Uh, he's seen like a million billion shows. Uh, just because you like something that's popular doesn't mean you haven't also seen the unpopular things. Uh, then, like, the, if you actually think about it for more than a second, that logic doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, so writing someone off just because they like Tame Impala, actually, this is all a stupid argument because I agree with writing people off if they like Tame Impala. 
and there's definitely a difference here and i'm not sure what it is i i would say that like what people often say about well what I, people say about naruto i think applies to tame impala they say naruto is good if it's the only anime you've ever seen but once you've seen more anime you can't go back uh i agree with that and with tame impala like tame impala is good if it's the only psych rock you've ever heard but then if you've heard more psych rock you you can't think it's good anymore and i agree with that sentiment but i also don't think it's right to then say that's awful like i don't like shonen right i don't i didn't really like yu yu hack show when i watched it for example right but i'm not gonna write it off just because i don't like it like there's still things in it that are valuable just because art I think this is the, the like the difference between immaturely and maturely consuming art is that if you're if you're immaturely consuming art, you will look at the piece as a whole and think that was bad, or that was good. Whereas if you're maturely consuming art, you 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 will strip the piece down to its bare essentials in whatever way you prefer. Be it what I was talking about with music before, you will either you know you can look at it as a whole piece, you can look at it in its historical context, you can look at it. But like from a music theory point of view, from a timbre point of view, from a technical playing point of view, you know anything like that, or anime billion ways to look at it, right? And you could tear it apart like that, and then you can actually like Nanoha, for example. Nanoha, I don't like any of the Nanoha. I really, really, really want to get into Nanoha, but I can't get into Nanoha. It's just too slow and boring. I watch the movies because the the, the TV show is just too slow and boring and like badly made in almost every way the only cool thing about Adam, nanoha is uh like the in the actual show is the way their their like sticks transform into different modes and they have loads of different modes and they all speak different languages that shit's awesome i fucks with that and they have huge magical beams i fucks with that shit but sadly most of the show is people standing around talking about stuff i don't care about um and yet when i think about nanoha i'm interested in it like, the story behind Nanoha's existence is so fascinating to me that I would call it, like, I, I really like the show, despite not liking the show. I just really like that it exists, and I, I like, it has so much stuff that I like about it. It's just that none of those things that actually make a show good. Do you know, like, they don't make a show enjoyable to watch, or, like, they don't make you think about the actual show. They're all other aspects, like the music, or... Uh, the the history of the show or the people that Shimbo worked on Shimbo made Nanoha that shit you know it's sick that's what I'm talking about bam boom pow boom only a few people are gonna have the in depth knowledge of of like I okay psych rock is such a vague genre because like okay let's take a, a like fat worm of error for example if am I gonna say Oh, well, you're... Okay. I like Tim and Paula. I'm going to play three characters now. One of them is going to be called John, and this is John. Ah, oh, man, Tim and Paula is my favorite band. I love psychedelic rock. And this is... Now I'm now I'm Alan. Oh, Tim and Paula's popular bullshit. Uh, I like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. You're fucking not a real psychedelic fan. Go listen to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And now I'm going to be, no thank you. Fat Worm of Error is the only real band. Who's right in this situation? No one's right. No one's wrong. They all just have opinions. And they're all wrong, right? Tame Impala, not the best band of all time. Not very good. King Gizzard. I like King Gizzard stuff. But just because Tame Impala's not a good band doesn't mean that that automatically the other I don't know what the fucking point I'm making here is all I'm saying is don't think in black and white things are nuanced if you're thinking about art don't just write something off as good or bad unless it's Code Geass because Code Geass is actually just bad and there's nothing good about it thank you for coming to my TED talk